Okay guys, there's me looking out my front door. Okay, so we made it to the ranch. I heard something out here. Oh, that's what I heard. Can't be in here. Croaking. Now you're in webs. See that? You're in webs now. God, you're tiny. What are you? There it goes. There it is. Okay, the bird is free. The truck is bent and uh, let's check the temperature in here. 93 degrees in the house. There's that air conditioner. Problem is the batteries don't have enough juice to run this. So what we need to do is put a cooler in this window here. Okay, we got two coolers. There's a blown tire from the trailer from our events earlier today, which was a lot of fun. There's the big rig. So what we need to do tomorrow with this, the reason why we brought it out, tomorrow we need to dig up this whole situation here. The septic is directly underneath this purple cactus. How convenient. And it is bad. There's a lot of it. So I guess we'll pull up the fence post and dig that out. Get this truck unloaded. Look at this. This ear of this cooler ate through my coating, through the paint, and into the aluminum. Something fierce. What is it? Inyati? The good news is if you buy an Oxford white truck and you mess up your tailgate or your bed, it's like literally six or seven, 800 bucks for a whole new bed and tailgate because they take the trucks and they pull the bed and tailgate off to do the utility bodies and stuff for guys that want real trucks with utility bodies. All right, so forgot to bring gloves. Oh. This one's a lot lighter. In a few months, we'll have a bunch of coolers. I ended up having to wire these gates closed because of the wind and messed them up. So I'm gonna have to walk around the outside there. I'm looking for snakes. This gate has fallen off since our last video. That's good. It's decaying right before my eyes. Okay, let's remove this screen. It's not doing a lot anyways, it's pretty porous. I feel like they built it slightly too big. Come on. Ew. Well, that didn't survive. It wasn't made right anyways. They had already kinked it to get it in there. It's like six o'clock. Sun's gonna be going down here in a second. So I gotta get my sleeping quarters ready because I can't sleep when it's like 97 in the house. Oh, that feels kind of nice. I'm gonna run outside and stick it in. You guys can watch. You guys are gonna love it. You guys ready? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, literally everything's designed for vertical windows, not horizontal. And in Arizona, everything horizontal. So I don't know what you're supposed to do about that. Because the window should drop down on like that. But it doesn't. Fans on low, that's high. Pump, I don't know if the pump works or not. I just wanted to show you that I had fully intended to install the cooler with the little line tucked up nicely along the base of the house or the eave. I even got, you know, the tap that has the little, you know, the little hole so you can run the water line out and the little T-fitting and all that, all that jazz to do it the right way, okay? But I also planned on being here hours earlier today. So this is what we're, this is what we're looking at now. So birds were kind enough to poop on everything. So that's good. Take our hose out of our weird 
Hose keeper. So much cactus around here. You can't go anywhere without getting stabbed. And you have to be careful that you don't stab your hose either, so. Oh man, I hope I have enough. It looks close. The suspense is killing me. Okay. Oh yes. It's barely long enough. Here's our little adapter for the garden hose. It's just a hosed half inch, half inch to three eighths, three eighths to quarter, right into the black cooler hose. Evaporative coolers, if you guys don't have them, they work by uh, evaporating water to cool the air. They don't work when it's real humid, but it's not real humid right now. So hopefully we're all right. Oh man, I just noticed like a old repair in this cooler. I'm gonna go turn on the water. Let's see if it comes on. Oh, there it goes. Oh, we're just gonna let it do its thing and uh, fill this up. I don't know why it's cutting in and out. Let me go turn the hose up. It's excruciating. Okay, I don't know why it's going so slow. I wonder if I introduced dirt into the system and there's dirt clogging this up now. Okay, we need to support the bottom of this because we don't have a window coming down to support it. And uh, something like cinder blocks or something would be really helpful. Oh, well, look at that. The land provides. This land out here really does provide. Anything you need shows up like immediately. Man, the problem is land might provide scorpions. I hate to undo the woman's uh, garden. We can always put it back. The lady that used to live here, she, she did a bunch of stuff. She passed away from cancer, unfortunately. Now let's grab some wood and uh, check for scorpions. I don't see any. It's a temporary solution. It'll probably only be like this for like 10 years. Okay, we need a smaller piece of wood. We'll grab a different one. Okay, well that one, that one's not big enough. Ah. What is going on? I feel like I'm tripping out here. Now, the astute among you might realize, might have noticed that this is my original piece of wood. That is craftsmanship right there. We may have to open this up because it's definitely clogged. Our faucet here is dribbling around the stem. So if you ever have this happen, the fix is super easy. This is your packing nut, right? So you just take a croissant wrench and we're just gonna put it on here and give it a little tweak. And that will stop the water coming up from the packing. Let's make sure that the base is tight is. So we'll give this just a little tweak. So we're gonna support the pipe. There we go. Now we can open this all the way without it uh, weeping on us. That's it. Let's go find out what's happening here. Cause this is like pretty pathetic. Okay, we got low, low T over here too. It feels like it has plenty of pressure. So let's kink it. This is all clogged up right here. Let's stick the hose in this side and we'll give her a little blast and unkink it. A cricket came out of there. That cricket was from around here. It crawled up the water hose and died. So that's what was clogging us up. Okay, now we've got some liveliness here. So our water pressure, there's no pumps. It's just that tank up on the hill there, that little black dot. That black dot right there, that's the water tank. And then because it's higher than us, this is the kind of pressure we're getting. Impressed. Okay, all right, now, we, now we're getting filled with some enthusiasm. Here's our recirculatory pump. We'll cut that on for a second. And you'll see what it does is it throws down water and it recycles that water. So how it works is it's got a two-speed fan. Water comes in, it's got a float. When the water gets full, the float shuts off. It's got a recirculatory pump here that brings water to the top and distributes it, okay? And some coolers have four panels. It doesn't matter, this is just a single panel. This is our pad here. It's made out of Aspen. You're supposed to change it every year. I'm guilty of doing it like sometimes less than that. And look, it's got a distribution rail across the top here. 
So we'll just plug that in. And that'll begin to soak the pad. This cooler was bent when I bought it. So let's stick our croissant wrench in here and just fix this. There we go. Our pads are getting wet. 28 and a quarter. Sharpie gave out. Of course it did. By 31 and three quarters. Let's take our non-functional marker. You guys are pretty tall right now because I got the tripod all extended. Just enjoy it. A lot of you guys are probably short. So enjoy your moment in the sun. Ooh, there's our unkindness of ravens over there. Gee, there's a whole mess of them. They're all their kids just over there reproducing like crazy. So this truck has the power beyond option or whatever it's called, where it's got an electrical system. It's got two alternators. And so we'll just hit this button. Okay, the truck's running. It needs more def. Def me, bro. Looks like it uses more def while it's towing. Okay, I hit that button and it said your engine will continue to run. But then I pulled the key out and the engine stopped running, so whatever that means. Let's go over here and uh, use this thing here. So I've not used it. Okay, bring that out. Let's find out if we got any sparkles coming out of the plug here. And then we can use the cir circle saw to, uh, well, I must've cut my circle saw cord. All right. Cool. Let's try pushing this button. Okay, I heard something click. Oh, it stopped, stopped clicking. Okay. The coolest part about this feature is it idles your expensive diesel that uh, with all the emission stuff really isn't designed to be idled very much. So it's a, it's a good setup. Okay, so 28 and a quarter. I don't have a straight edge, so we're just gonna use this piece of cardboard. You guys are kind of staring into the sun, so it's just how it goes right now. I am too. We're all staring into the sun at some point in our lives. Okay, so let's make a mark here. I can't see that at all, so that's good. All right, let's make sure we hang it over the tailgate enough. You guys might be getting ready to watch a real, real fun fail where uh, I flip out. We'll see. Especially if it snags or does something weird, we'll pull it out a little bit more. Makes that kind of makes this a 500 horsepower saw, right? You see what I'm saying about the saw? And let's take our wood, the wood that we played with together. Now we should be able to slip this in here if I cut it right at all. <clears throat> okay, that looks real good. Let me just show you what we got going here. Look at that. Wish that pad was fresher. It'd work a heck of a lot better. This place is falling apart. Even since I bought it, the wind is just tearing it up. And we gotta leave, you gotta leave a window open when you're running a cooler because it's bringing in air from outside. It's not like air conditioning. Let's grab our temperature thing. First of all, you guys are too tall. You guys are too full of yourselves. All right, 
Let's grab our temperature thing. And it's dropped to 91 an ounce. So it's very reasonable in here. Let's go flip this on and see how long it takes to fix this room up. Turn on high. So we got quite a bit of air. We'd have even more if that pad wasn't funky. We'll see a rise in the humidity and a drop in the temperature. That's the trade-off. Man, that cooler needs a pad. If I keep whining, I'm gonna need one too. Oh, look at that, we lost a degree. So it's gone from 16 to 21 and from 91 to 90. I don't know if that's a good trade-off. Okay, while well, you guys are looking at the temperature here, I thought it'd be interesting while this is running to go check the amp draw. If we can figure out how to look at the amp draw. Okay, so it says a 20% load, right? Okay, so let's turn this on for just a second and see what kind of draw we have. Okay, when I tried to turn this on, it just shut everything off. So I hear something beeping. So let me shut this off or let me unplug this. Okay, so we unplug that. We must have overloaded the system. The system is weak. These use significantly less electricity than those. But let's, uh, Hopefully it comes back on. There's no power in the house. So that's the good news, which is interesting because I've never seen this overload before. Oh, good. So here's the output says zero. That's still on. I wonder if we've popped a breaker somehow. All these are still on. Oh man, I hope it comes back on. The system is never shut off. Huh. Please come back on, because I don't know what to do. I don't know what this means. Yeah, so I've got zero power now, and I've got to figure out how to restart this sucker. I don't know what that means. I don't know how to restart any of this stuff. I don't want to mess with it, because it looks rigged, rigged up pretty. Okay, here's the master inverter. Let's shut this off. Let's cut it back on. I don't know if it's gonna fire up or not. Oh, had a fault, do you see that? Let me go unplug our cooler. That cooler might be short now a little bit. <sighs> Dang it. Okay, we unplugged our cooler. Let's see if power comes back on around here. Oh, power came back on. So it was our cooler that was causing trouble. Okay. Let me see if I can't get this to come back on by being nicer to it. Okay, the pump is running. The fan. My fan is bad. Okay, the fan is off. Pump is off. Please power come back on. One, two, three. Let's go out there and see if the motor got wet. It's causing some kind of fault. So let's see if our fan got wet. Our fan is dry. Okay, my power's come back on, so that's good. It is cooling down right away. So like Phoenix, it doesn't cool down right away when the sun goes down, it just stays hot all night. Like the low here tonight is 70. In Phoenix, it's, you know, 91 or three or something. It's horrible. Why? Okay, what I'm gonna do is unplug this air conditioner, for, I mean this refrigerator for a second. It's been running continuously since we bought the place, so that's been fine. I don't know why I feel like, like that light is causing issues. Doesn't make sense. Is it all motors at this point? Let me go grab a uh, box fan. Grab a box fan. Let's see if that's gonna work. Okay, very little load. OK, 
Okay, it's okay with that. It's okay with that. I have an idea with nothing else running. Like, whole house is off. Heard it go me. I wonder if it just has a bad connection. It looks like a bad connection. It will give me power again, hopefully. Oh man. Let's see if there's any chance this will run at all. Well guys, I blew it. Uh, <clears throat> I must have overheated the inverter or screwed something up. But now I can't run any inductive load except for a box fan. So it's just gonna be real hot tonight. Ah, oh, we have a little heat wave running right now. Dang it. I hung up these uh, solar lights. They're really pretty. It just gives you a little light without uh, adding any drain to the system. The system is very weak at the moment until I can uh, afford a set of batteries. Let's see if we can't unload our uh, tractor. It's actually way better out here than it is inside, so. Okay. I can't shift in the drive because I left the circular saw plugged into the bed. How funny. I guess you can't uh, work on stuff while you're driving down the road. Which I mean, what's the point, right? This is uh, pretty hard dirt out here. So I think we'll be okay. Sun is setting. It's really cooling down. All right, let's not make the same mistake I did when uh, I loaded up in Phoenix. Now this dirt is pretty hard, so I'm hoping that the jack stands won't sink into it too far and fall over. There we go. It's been a long day. It's been a long couple days. All right, here we go. Oh, went too far. It seems really steep. It's like, uh, what is that, like a 30 degree angle? Let's make you guys level. So that's level with the ramp. We're cutting corners because we're tired, so that'll be good. Just make sure we wear our seat belts. So I'm working in the dark, which is always ideal. Let's give you say, some light. You know, give me some light too. I'm hoping that the inverter in the house will cool down so I can have a swamp cooler tonight. Cause boy is it gonna be hard to sleep. Basically just won't be sleeping. I've always been all about the sh strap on, but uh, the chain on is not is a pretty good method. I think I'm gonna have to invest in some chains and binders cause uh, it feels a lot more secure than uh, the those yellow straps. The other thing about those yellow straps is if you, if they're out in the sun a lot, I kind of don't trust them and I gotta buy a new set. A bat. I'm gonna go close the house so we don't get a bat in the house. There's bats cruising around. Let's hope for the best here. I'll put my seatbelt on. Oh, hell. There's some kind of washer and snap ring right here. There's a washer and snap ring on the floor and they go to my brake pedals. I just can't believe what's going on today. It's been a, a wild day. I don't really want to operate it without brakes. Why would the brakes explode? Here's a snap ring and a washer and they go right there and they hold the brake pedals on <sighs> that shaft. Let me see if I can get them on there. I wonder what would have pushed them off. <clears throat> yeah, I open the door and just, they're here to greet me. I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's just, Something to the door or something. No. Snap ring for the brake pedal fell off. Just fell off. Let's go grab a, a 
flathead screwdriver. Oh no. Okay, let's cancel all this. I've got no power in the house. So we'll just forget this for now. <clears throat> we got absolutely no power in the house. And uh, something's wrong where the battery banks aren't giving power to the inverter. So as soon as the sun went down, the inverter lost all power. So real quick, actually, I saw Buster, the ranch cat. Let's go give him some food real quick. Let's do something positive. I'm having a lot of negative stuff today. Buster? Hi, Buster. Hi. There he is. Kitty, kitty. There he is under the grater. He's kind of scared of me. So we'll give him a little tuna fish. He'll like that. So I saw that the charger said sleeping. It's an Outback charger. And I don't know what, the, what that means. We could try rebooting all this. Hold on to your butt. Um. Okay, so this box says 12 volt service, whatever that means. Um, it's time to take a peek in here. All right, so we've got our major DC cables, which are these two. There's no fuses, just go straight to here. And then the cables are coming out and feeding this inverter here. Under here, I saw a button like the garbage disposal has. Input breaker. Oh. Here's off. Here's on. It says it's outputting power now. So what was that? Yeah, so we have power now. Oh. Oh. Okay, guys, we have no power whatsoever at the airport. So the inverter keeps shutting down. And uh, so this is our battery shed. And let's see if we can figure out what's wrong. So I can already see what's wrong is everything is horribly, horribly corroded. It's just, it's bad news. Let's knock some of this off. It's weird. Let's go ahead and check for voltage across this one. 6.35, 6.4, 6 6.3, okay. Does this connect to this? Yes, yes. Does this connect to this? Yes. This one to this one. So yeah, look guys, this connection's completely severed. Oh God, it doesn't even sound like there's anything in there. I don't think this is gonna work at all. So this right here feels awful. I wish I had gloves. Let's go reset the power and just see if we get anything at all. Okay, we got power. Those are not gonna last, those little cables I put up. Those are just test leads. I wonder if I could run the swamper. But just those two little connections I made, I doubt it. <laughs> well, I better run it on low. It's not gonna last. Let me go see if those wires are melting. The wire's warm, but it's not melting.
I mean, that wire's warm, but it's not melting either. And I've got enough power to run a cooler now. So, what the hell is that? Let's turn this off. Pick up all this stuff later. I gotta get away from lead acid. Maybe, maybe some solar company will sponsor me. That Black Widow. Damn. Damn, they're everywhere. I hope I don't get bit by any of these stupid things. Okay, guys. It is 5.11 a.m. Sun's coming up. Let's see how our... Morning, everybody. It's another perfect morning at the ranch. It feels like 69, maybe 68 degrees. It's just gorgeous out. It's fun to see the tractor here. In the new ranch truck. Let's, um, and I even like seeing my old buddy over there. All right, so yesterday was a real roller coaster of a day. I'm hoping today goes better. I, I got no sleep last night. Weird delirium, because I really didn't get good sleep the night before. And uh, I mean, I could do one night, who cares? But when you start stacking them, I start to get pretty delirious. So let's operate some heavy equipment. Yeah, it's almost like I don't have enough room for the snap ring. If I push everything, it shifts over just enough. I was trying to do this in the middle of the night and I couldn't see what was going on. Also, I don't have a shower, so I'm attracting flies. But you guys can't smell it, so it's okay. So everything's cool. I know you want to smell it, but I'm not at the point of desperation yet where I'm selling my smells. May have to go into the old man's shed and see if we can find a pair of snap ring pliers. There's probably a pair in there somewhere, but finding them is another story. I haven't really gone through his stuff yet. It's weird, you know, going through some other man's tools. It's his stuff. He'd kill me if he knew I was doing that. All right, let's go see if we can find some snap ring pliers. Because this isn't happening for me right now. Oh, of course, the door to the hangar broke. So I don't have an easy way to get in there. Let's uh, give up. No, <laughs> let's, let's uh, can never stop giving up, guys. Let's try this again. Beautiful. Looks like they hammered that on. Let me go get a hammer and a stick. A hammerable stick. Okay. The snap ring's under that lip now. And all we gotta do is get the rest of it on that lip without snapping the snap ring or breaking the glass. Oh, so close, guys. Okay. Oh, so close and oh, so far away. Should be wearing safety glasses. Push this in. The real risky right now. Who knows where that snap ring went? Good riddance. The more you look, the more likely you are to like crush it into the ground. Never to be found again. Surely it didn't shoot this far out. Okay, I found it. Let's give it one more shot, huh? And then we'll put it on without the washer. That's what I need. Is a real loud bug. Come on, dude. Okay. Now, I don't trust it yet. Because I feel like it's pretending. So let's, um, okay, I watched it seat. Yeah, that's seated now. Okay, there you go. That's how you professionally install a snap ring with a pry bar and a hammer. We're back in business. Just make sure you never put your tools away. 
because otherwise your life could be organized and better, and you don't want that. You want the rule to impose plenty of chaos, and then you want to impose a bunch on yourself. It took me 30 minutes to get that snap ring on there, <laughs> so that's good. Oh, the other fun thing is these ramps like to flip up while you're loading and unloading. And it, you know, and you just have to hope that they settle back down in their uh, grooves. Let's get this bad boy unloaded. It's a bad boy. All right, let's, I'm really tired, guys. All right, let's get up here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we want to be in four wheel drive, which you probably are. Let's join the brakes again. It's the only thing that stopped the brakes from falling off yesterday. All right. So here we go. Oh, good. I think I got rid of the key. Ah, oh, yeah. Let's fire her up. Let's put her seatbelt on. Put her foot on the brake. A range. Parking brake off. Let's give her a little bit of throttle. Let's get a little weight on the nose here. So that we don't flip over backwards. All right, let's go for it. Okay, the sketchy part's over, thank goodness. So glad that worked out. It's taken, I took a couple chances there. That tube right there looks like the ideal spot. We've got these doors in the way. And there might be snacks under here. So you do a spready. I don't know what for what reason, but let's put down these tires so that it's sitting on tires. I guess I don't, I don't, I don't know why, but it should be on tires. I guess I think this will be a good little tractor hole. The good things about these doors is you don't have to worry about them falling off and hitting everything because they've already fallen off. I mean, there may very well be snakes under there. Wake up the snakes, right? So they could be more formidable. I wouldn't even be afraid to lift it up, except for you guys all said there's snakes, snakes under everything. And you might be right, so I don't know. Some kind of critters. Looks like there's no, there's no real critters anymore. They probably scurried off. Come on, I'll let you guys ride on my lap while I run the tractor. Look at the sun rising. Oh man, it's still heaven out here. It's a lot of issues. A lot of issues and they wear on you. But it's still heaven. You guys can sit on my lap and take a tractor ride. Let's uh, lower our load. So my wife works in safety. And uh, told, she told me that I should uh, only move around with the load as high as I absolutely need to. The other thing I've been doing is using the safety belt, which is funny because when I pulled it out of the reel, everything had dust on it except for the safety belt. It's brand spanking new. Yeah, nobody uses the safety belt, but if you roll over a tractor, you want to be in this cage until the action stops. Okay, let's let go of our brake. Let's put us in B range. Let's go. So we're still at like 1200, that's fine. Let's push the correct pedal. There we go. This is the first time this thing's cruising around the ranch and it's like the third time or second time I've driven it. This is amazing. Oh, okay, so look, I'm passing our spot already. Let's uh, back it up. Oh, and it has a uh, cameras everywhere. Now let's just drop it. Let's see if she's going to balance right there. Looks like she will. Alright, let's back it up. 
I should have flipped it around so I could hook it up to the three point, right? But you know, I just don't I don't think of any I don't think of anything. So also we need to get rid of the forklift attachments. This thing is so cool guys. I it makes you feel like a superhero. It just moves everything with zero effort. Alright. Uh, right now is a lot of effort because I don't know what I'm doing, but later it will be zero effort. Let's take out this pin. I probably shouldn't cross right here. Let's go this way. So you gotta choose between the tractor and the snakes. Let's grab this pin. You see that pin right there I can see? So I'm gonna rotate down. Just gonna pull that pin out. Now I'm gonna drop the whole arm. And we should be detached. Okay, now that we got our implement out, we'll lift our, our loader just a little bit so that we don't drag it through the dirt with nothing on it. There's your guys' legs. There's your body over there. Okay, let's go. There we go. Let's really let her open up. Man, we gotta be doing like seven. grappler thing here. And this goes in here, through like that. Got to open this first. Stick this in like that. There we go. I was unloading the tractor. Must have been too steep of an angle in the backhoe uh, frame left a skid mark. Now these are the only skid marks that I leave anymore. So the poop, the poop guy's coming out today and he wants to suck the poop out of this tank, but the tank is under this cactus patch right here. Let's save our cow skull in here. So we'll save this. Here, pal, why don't you, why don't you take a load off? Ow! Okay. Tons of cactus stickers. And I wasn't touching the cactus, but the cactus had touched the boards. So. I don't know if you can see it, but it just looks like a fine hair. And it sucks, because you can't hardly get it out.
one of the issues I'm having here is there's a giant boulder here. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's buried in cactus, but it's a big boulder. This tractor's capable of lifting one ton with its bucket, supposedly. So let's see what, let's see what happens. I'm afraid of falling into the septic with this tractor. Uh, I just don't want to make a dumb move here. Probably already have, but. All right, I haven't got to play with this. I love it. I just push that stuff over there. I'm, man, I, I, I probably, I, I feel like a chimpanzee could do better at this than me, but I'm having fun, so that's what counts. Man, I hope I don't dig through the top of my septic. I'm kind of worried about that. So that's kind of why I've been scrimping the top here. Yeah, when I was a kid, they had these uh, mechanical backhoes at the parks. And I didn't get to play with them very much, but uh, thanks to you guys, here I am. I mean, this is like, yeah, I'm not very good at it, but what are, you know, what are you gonna do? Look at the power of this thing. Look at that. Oh. Looks awful. I wonder where the septic is. Look at this strange fruit over here. Look at these green spiky balls. That's weird, huh? A lot of this here, because I'm inexperienced, I kind of feel like digging by hand might be smart to not just dig through the top of the thing, the septic. I really can't afford to replace that system too, on top of everything else. Hopefully it could be pumped out and it'll be fine for a while. You guys are ridiculous. Laser birds. I'm too afraid to take the loader over here and I'm too afraid that the teeth on the hoe will break the box. I hope I haven't broken the box already. The tank, it's a concrete tank, according to what the septic guy told me. I'm not sure exactly where it is, so. Just kind of digging, looking for concrete. It's a reference. Right here is a pipe that leads to the leach field, which goes out here. So I'm guessing it goes straight into the house like this, but I have no idea. These guys are supposed to be here at nine-ish. It's now one-ish, but it's all right. It sounds completely different. So now I just gotta follow this tank and look for a lid. Probably 103 right now, so, or 100 anyways. So 
I'm moving slow, but I'm gonna get better, better with the backhoe. I won't have to do stuff like this manually. I saw a big blue truck coming. I don't know if you guys can see it. I can't hardly see anything out here. So he's coming to vacuum this thing. So I found a metal, metal piece. I don't think it's a cap. I think it might be a lifting point. Maybe it's a cap, but I gotta get to digging. I'm supposed to have this dug up before they got here at nine o'clock this morning. So everybody's running late. All right, guys, septic dudes are out here. What's your name? Brandon. It's nice to meet you, man. They're from Calvin Septic. So I found the one door and he has a suspicion the other door is right over here. They're usually not too far from each other. What are you saying, five feet on center? Yeah, about five foot in center. Let me see if I can find another shovel. Oh, I got another on my truck. Let me go see if I can snag one real quick. Yeah, I was gonna snag one. You got, are they usually down a foot or two like that? Minimum cover is six inches. Oh, okay. I found them as deep as five foot. God. Oh, I think you found the seam there. There it is. I guess if you keep them balanced, they'll run a while, right? Like if you that. if you keep the septic balanced, like you pour that rid X or whatever. No, no rid X. No? No, no, no. What do you do to it? Nothing? Nothing. Use it uh, normally, you know. Keep the trash out of it. Don't be putting any kind of additives in it. Okay. Uh, rid X, um, Green Gobbler, anything you buy on Amazon, that kind of stuff. Just forget it. Yeah. So you use septic toilet paper and that's it, right? Any so kind of toilet paper you want. Really? Yeah, but it doesn't have to say septic safe or anything like that. There's no real such septic safe toilet paper. Yeah. So, so the, uh, so this place was empty for four years. You think that could have spoiled the septic a little bit if uh, it didn't flow for four years? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, it could have been the fact that being vacant, the tank water level may have dropped in the tank. And yeah. then now if you guys are using it, you brought the water level up and it can bring the dry Correct. solids off the bottom come oh. up and flow down the pipe. I see what you're saying. Like almost a raft. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to, I told the wife, I cut a hole in one of the lawn chairs and just set it out in the bushes, but she said that that wasn't gonna fly. No, she had to have the porcelain toilet to use. She couldn't just use the yeah. lawn chair in the yard. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's, it's these, these fancy women, man, they're just... <laughs> what's the seal see, see, uh, seal with? Is it just dirt in the crack? Yeah, just the lid sets down in there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the moisture from the water will come up and kind of calcify around it. Oh, okay. It seals the lid in. Yeah, see, in that pipe there is straight in. Yeah. So that's how it should be. Yeah, it's full of pretty thick grease stuff, huh? Is it supposed to be that kind of solid like that? Yes. Okay. That's scum. That's your floating stuff on the tank. Yeah, we just jumped into the into the idea of doing our own sewer, water, and uh, electricity. Yeah. And so far, two out of three have failed. <laughs> so. Oh, it is a shop vac, basically. Yeah, that's what it is. A big, a big green shop vac. Oh, sick. You guys, that's where the poop go. Found it for real. Okay, I'm gonna back up. <laughs> he's, he's got it on blow mode. To the suck and it's splashing. You know, we celebrate all these actors and stuff, but these guys are the real heroes. I mean, they keep all the infrastructure going. Uh, people who actually do, you know, instead of just talk. Do you guys have air in your truck? That sucks. Window down. <laughs> yeah, 260 air. You don't have it in bubble mode, huh? Oh, good. No, oh, good. No, you said it was backing up? Yeah, it's backing up sometimes. 
Okay, we flushed the toilets. Way deeper than I thought it would be. How, how deep are they usually? About five foot overall. Five foot, wow. For a thousand gallon tank. Some of them get deeper as they get bigger. Okay. Some of them get longer. So it looks like the actual, this is just a canister. And it's got a, a PTO pump, huh? So that's the PTO pump. So it can, it can blow and suck, right? That's cool. All right, the gas guy is here. Let me go set that up. All right, well, the gas guy showed up while the poop guys were wrapping up, which is odd because usually the gas comes before the poop, but uh, it's mysterious. So let's go see what he did.